Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews. And today we're going to be reviewing the new album from Korn titled Requiem. So we've listened to this album non-stop for the entire week and I have to say, well, it's good to a degree. Now, this album, when we did our new release video on it, I said overall, uh, pretty good. It was enjoyable. But the more I listened to this album, the more I felt like there started to form an asterisk around when I say pretty good. Now, I still kind of feel that way about this album. Is that, yeah, it's an enjoyable album as its own thing. As a corn album is where I feel the problems start. Now, Start the Healing was the first single release from this album, and we both reacted to it, we both checked it out, we both liked it, and I still think it's a good song, but does it really sound like a Korn song? I don't really think so. I, I, I feel like this song, and a few others on this album, sound a little bit more like the stuff we heard from Jonathan Davis' solo work. I feel like some of these songs really could have fit right in on Black Labyrinth with the other songs, mm -hmm. and it would have been good. I mean, that was a good album. We both enjoyed that quite a bit. I believe it got two toe tags. So, yeah. not to say the quality's not there. It is. But it lacks some of the personality from this band. Mm -hmm. And there were three songs that really stood out to me. Forgotten, Lost in the Grandeur, and Disconnect. Forgotten feels like a corn song. Straight up. With the riff. I love the pre-chorus on this song. I really wish it was the chorus. In fact, like I'm a little disappointed that it's not because it's only four bars of pre-chorus. Then you jump into this, you know, more so melodic chorus, which is fine. It's not like it really takes stuff away, but I just love how this pre-chorus sounds and I wish they rolled with that. But I really like how it's like the modern band with a more stripped down sound, sounding more like early 2000s core, like Untouchables and Take a Look in the Mirror. I thought that was really cool. But you have a song like Let the Dark Do the Rest and that kind of started to... It, it was interesting because I listened to a radio interview with Jonathan Davis about this record. Mm -hmm. And regarding Lost in the Grandeur, he mentioned, I believe it was this song, he mentioned that it was kind of like a, a B-side from the nothing. And that's when something Makes hit sense. me. I'm like, you know what? A lot of these songs sound like B-side tracks from the last two records. I, I could see that for I could, sure. I could totally hear these working on the Nothing or Serenity yeah. of Suffering, which are both great albums, mm -hmm. but these feel like a little bit watered down quality-wise. Now, Lost in the Grandeur has a really cool riff to it as well. I love that whole triplet eighth note thing, but, um, and it also feels like a corn song. And Disconnect also feels like a corn song, but you mentioned this, and I agreed with you like throughout the week when we talked a little bit about it, that Disconnect honestly feels like a Mastodon song performed by Korn. Yeah, I, that's what I thought too. Like, Or I could picture my, myself hearing Mastodon perform that song and it kind of gelled well. Like, they would do it in their own style, but just mm -hmm. the way it's written and the the way it's performed, is just, I could hear Mastodon singing that, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I could 100% hear Braun Daler's voice singing the chorus of Disconnect. Yeah. Like, it totally fits very well. Um, so sticking on Disconnect, it was probably one of my higher favorite track throughout the week. It's right in the middle of the album, track number five. Um, and it's the vocals mainly, uh, just the harmonizing and the layering that they do on the vocals, which kept drawing me to it. So at the beginning of the week, I'm listening to this album and I keep looking down at my my you know phone. What song is this again? Oh, this is Disconnect again. Oh, what song is this? Oh, it's Disconnect again. Like, whenever that happens, you know a song is catching your attention, it's gonna be a good one. Um, a couple other songs that did catch my attention. Um, Start the Healing. Um, I thought it was still one of the best songs on the album, to be honest. It was the single. I can understand why it's the single. I think it's the catchiest song on the album. It's got the catchiest hook, the one that's st stuck in my head the most after listening. Um, Hopeless and Beaten, which is right after Disconnect. Um, probably the heaviest song on the album, but as far as like weight goes, but still wasn't that heavy as far as corn goes. Um, and my confession, track number eight, I just really like the riffs in the pre-chorus. They were cool. The rest of the album, I agree with a lot of what TV Fish said. Um, this is maybe a little cliche to say, but this band I feel like is a shadow of their former self. I, I went back and listened to some older records, um, like Untouchables and Issues and See You on the Other Side. Um, not the whole album, just kind of songs here and there. And I miss that corn. That's the corn I miss. Well, it's it's different. It's not the same. And 
The Nothing it was a great album. If I remember correctly, it had to grow on me a bit. It did get two toe tags. This definitely feels like B-side track from that album, which is not okay. It, this feels like a rushed album. It feels like they um, threw it together last minute. Like I keep saying, using this example, like the label's like, hey guys, you're on contract. You owe us a record. You better get one out. So they're like, okay, whatever. 32 minutes, which is pretty short, by the way. Very short. Um, and it's just a bunch of like, the whole album's got pretty much the same vibe throughout. It's just not what I want from Korn. Yeah, and you know, a funny thing, you mentioned a few songs there, and I can barely even tell you anything about them, and that's another part of the problem, problem. is that a lot of these songs are forgettable. Worth, I can only remember anything about Worth It's On Its Way, because I have a note here saying that the scatting feels like it was forced. It feels like the scatting is on that song just to be there, because yeah. they, have, they always have a song that has the scatting on it. But there's no bagpipes anywhere. There are no bagpipes. You're no right. Bagpipes. What the? Yeah. Interesting. And you know what? I didn't even realize that until I went back and listened to the older core albums. And I went, okay, right away, that's something, that's a core element of this band that is not there. Even the Nothing had that. Like, that was, I think, on the first track, the Nothing's open with the pipes. No so bagpipes on here. That, that's another thing. And you know what? With this band, I like when they experiment. And they do a lot of, they've, they've done a lot of different stuff. That's one thing I really yeah. love about this band is that you've got stuff like See You on the Other Side, which is yeah. different. Untitled is different. The Path of Totality is the perfect example of that because that's, you know, that's metal uh, dubstep, which I think was incredible. I know that there's a split decision or a split uh, opinion on that record. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. But I like that this band does stuff like that and really steps outside the box within their own sound for having a career as long as they've had. Yeah. So I think this band still has potential to make really interesting and different things. Yeah. I just feel like they missed the mark with this one. But not to say the album is bad though, because if you don't think of this as a corn record. It's not a bad record, but yeah. given that it's a corn record, it's just really mid. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good in a sense that every song's kind of got a catchiness to it, so you can listen to it and kind of enjoy it. It's fine, but as far as takeaways come, it's few and far between. It's, there's not a lot going on here, really, and you can probably tell just by this review. Like, I don't have a lot to say about the album itself, other than the grand scheme of it didn't really do it for me throughout the week. But that said, let's get the ratings. TV Fish, what do you give Requiem? Well, you know, like I said, on, as its own thing, it's not bad, but as a corn album, it's a bit of a disappointment. So I'm really kind of just tossing and turning, but in the middle of the scale. So I really think I'm going to give this one a five because it's just very mid. But it's not bad. It's just as a corn album, bit of a disappointment yeah i could pretty much parrot a lot of the things that tv fish just said um but i'm a slightly a little bit more disappointed than that to be honest i feel like corn's one of those bands we got to hold to a higher standard um these guys headline festivals these guys sell out stadiums and they've been around for a long time we should not be okay with this type of mediocrity from them i'm going to give them a four and that's, I'm, I'm using harsh words on purpose because they are an elite level band. And I feel like that- They've done far better. They've done far better. They're capable of far better. Especially like recently, because the last album, the one before this one was really, really good. Yeah. So it's a four for me. Uh, disappointing, because I want to see Korn do well. I've been a Korn fan for a long, long time. So yeah, it's disappointing to uh, have to do that. Yeah. Four from Vile, a five for myself. Anyway, guys, that's all we got for you today. Remember to like the video. If you like the comment, tell us in the comments below. Did you like this album? Were you disappointed by this album? We always love to hear what you guys have to say. Remember to subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm TV Fish. And I'm Vile Self. And keep the horns up.